What's going on YouTube? Justin here, aka Goofy Skating Lifestyle, back at it again with another video. Today, I'm going to bring the Miata around the block with you guys so I can show you guys a better upload of how to drive a stick shift. I am in my 1995 NA Miata. So with a stick shift, of course, we're going to get straight to the point. You've got your shifter. In this case, this is a five speed. And you've got three pedals down below here. You've got your clutch, you've got your brake, and you've got your gas. Of course, your brake and gas is I'm sure you're familiar with with an automatic car. Easy peasy, let squeezy. You've got your key. I'm going to get straight to the point. You're going to put your key in, turn it to accessory position. You'll hear the air running and everything. You're going to want to push in your clutch, put it in neutral. So you've got your gears. I've got a five speed, so one, two, three, four, and then five. And then you've got reverse in the back. Sometimes reverse will be up here. It depends on the car. Most shift knobs will tell you. But put it in neutral. You'll shake it in the center. So if it's in first, it'll be like that. Push it down. You're in the center. Shake it. Crank it. Start it. Obviously make sure it's in neutral. And then you can release the clutch. Let her warm up for a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to let it warm up for like 30 seconds. And I'll be back with you guys. All right, guys, it's warmed up enough. So what you're gonna wanna do to get started is put down your handbrake like so. If you have a handbrake, if you have a normal like emergency brake down here, you would release it or by pulling the handle or whatever, or like um, this, this way. It's just a push down and release this up. Really simple. To get started, you wanna push your clutch in. Right down here, all the way depressed to the left and up for first gear and now that we're in first gear you want to let go of the brake pedal and then put your foot on the gas pedal start to release that clutch don't rev you want to rev a little bit but you don't want to rev past probably depending on your vehicle I'm gonna say for this car I don't rev it past a thousand rpm to just get it started up and moving I don't like rolling my clutches, so anywhere between 800, 900 to 1100 RPM is what you want to get started on. And then uh, once you've got it started like so, you're going to start moving. I'm going to bring you guys up to my stop sign here. So when you come up to a complete stop, you're going to want to let go of the gas pedal, hit your brakes before your engine decelerates completely, push in that clutch and bring it back to neutral. So for first, it's down, of course. Get back started. You just wanna let go of your brake. Once you're ready to get going, release that clutch very slowly. Don't rev over 1100 RPM or so. And then um, once you start going, get up to about, in this car, it depends on each vehicle, but in this car, I'm gonna shift 3500 into second. You could shift 2500 if you want, if you're still warming up the transmission and motor. If you're just an old school man and want to drive slow, you could shift 2500. Speed limit's 35 here, so once we get up further, I'm going to get onto uh, the main roads and stuff. We'll get up to speed. I'll explain to you guys there on uh, shifting and whatnot with uh, getting up to speed. It's the same scenario. Um, Downshifting is pretty straightforward. You can either just push the clutch in and let it rev match, try and rev match itself. Or what you can do is, you know, you can rev match it, which is a heel toe technique. Or if you're gonna hit the brakes, it's heel toe. But if you're not gonna heel toe and you just wanna downshift, you can rev match it so you can just blip the throttle like that. It's not that hard to do once you start learning more and more. You can uh, you probably don't want to float gears in a synchronized transmission, obviously, of course. So any, any vehicle besides a semi-truck, you probably don't want to float. So be sure you press in that clutch and engage it fully and disengage properly when you're driving. Do not rest your foot on the clutch pedal. That is the last thing you're going to want to do on a manual of transmission is rest your foot on the clutch pedal. Put it on the foot rest when you're done shifting, please. And then... Um, oh yeah, I am not responsible 
for any damage to your vehicle or wear and tear. Just to clarify, I will also put that in the description of this video. So we are in fifth gear now. I want to downshift into fourth. We're going to blip the throttle, the rev match. There you go, just like that, nice and smooth. I fully engaged the clutch, and then when I put it back into fourth gear, I disengaged it slowly. That's the way you're supposed to do it. And uh, be sure to always follow the rules of the road as best as you can. Um, all of my vehicles have a dash cam, as shown up here. So, of course, if anyone sees my car, I do not have time to play around. <laughs> so, if anyone is questioning that why, the reason why I have bucket seats in this car is because I daily this car and the reason for it is it's more comfortable and it's also safer to have buckets. Uh, the stock seats don't really carry the comfortability and protection that I was looking for, especially in a small ass car like this. So because of that, I decided to get the bucket seats for the driver and passenger side, just so I keep myself a little safer and so is my passengers. Um, you know, it's like a motorcycle driving this thing. You have to be really defensive. But anyway, back to it. I'm coming up to a stop sign. So I did downshift from fourth to third. You could have probably stayed in fourth, but we're not here. Before the RPMs drop completely and the motor bogs out, you want to put it back right back into neutral. But when you put it back into neutral, push in that clutch and engage it fully. So I have a short shifter in this car, which is nice. It's helpful for shifting quicker, but it doesn't really need to be a thing. Just float them. Shift 3,500 RPM. If you want to get up to speed, roll into that throttle. As you can see, it's the same scenario. If you want to accelerate a little harder, you just want to shift a little faster and hit those revs right. So it'll come naturally and smoothly with time. The more time you drive the stick shift, the more time you'll find it easier to adapt to it. Um, I've been driving sticks since I first started driving, and I love it every single day. It's the best uh, best decision and choice I've made was to drive stick instead of an auto. It helps me learn so much more about cars and gain better experience and control over your vehicle. So it's nice because of that. Downshift from fifth to fourth. You don't really need to downshift, like I said, up to a stoplight, but it helps to use engine brake use less brakes as well before I bog out push in the clutch put it in a neutral release the clutch until it's green once it's green I could put it in first when you're hanging out at a stoplight for more than 30 seconds I would recommend letting go of your clutch and disengaging it fully before you re-engage it at a green light only because um, you're gonna destroy your throw out bearing and potentially your pressure plate um, there's a pressure plate and a throw out bearing and because of those um, That's what helps engage the clutch And if you use your clutch like that and let it sit down at the bottom fully engaged at a stoplight It wears it out quicker So you want to try and minimize that wear and tear as much as possible. I'm sure of course When you're learning to drive stick you're probably gonna go through clutches a little bit faster and have more premature wear than your average individual that's been driving stick for a long time and has a lot of seat time in a manual transmission car but that comes with time and learning so if you get a manual car and you're looking into cars i would highly recommend getting something that is a reliable dailyable shit box to get started driving and stick for example a honda civic a miata a toyota corolla a camry or whatever whatever comes in manual i don't think a camry comes in manual but you know what i mean something that's reliable a volkswagen maybe but i would not recommend german auto because they are absolute dog box in my opinion i'm not going to say the s word again it should box whatever absolute dog poop um they don't last as long comparison to a 
Toyota, Honda, Mazda, or whatnot, especially with manuals. If you have to get a truck, I would get a Ford Ranger or a Ford F-150 in the older years because that's the only models that make them stick. Um, if you are a car enthusiast and you want to get a Mustang or Corvette, go for it. But learning to drive stick, I would probably stray away from that first and get a beater car to learn in. Enough running my mouth. This is all for today's video. My voice is a little raspy and bad today. I've been doing a lot of singing lately and having fun with that, of course. If you haven't checked out my karaoke videos, please check it out. It's a lot of fun for me, if you would like. Until the next video, I hope this helps for, for some of you guys. And please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.